In this question, we're given three possible Lewis structures to represent N2O. So we can see here we've got three different diagrams labeled one, two, and three with two nitrogens and one oxygen. And they all have different combinations of covalent bonds and lone pairs. All three of these are correct structures. They all have the right number of valence electrons in total, and they have each atom obeying the octet rule. So all of these are technically correct. However, because of formal charge, we'll find that some of these are better than others. So what we're gonna be doing first is calculating the formal charge on each atom in each of our molecules, and then we're gonna be choosing which of these is the most likely molecule that we'd actually find in nature. Okay, so let's start by calculating our formal charge on each of these atoms. We'll start with structure run. So remember our equation for formal charge is the number of valence electrons on a free atom minus the number of non-bonding valence electrons on the atom in that molecule minus the number of covalent bonds on the atom in that molecule. So let's write down that equation again here. So formal charge is the number of valence electrons in a free atom, according to the periodic table. We're going to subtract the number of non-bonding valence electrons shown on the atom in that molecule. And we're going to subtract the number of bonds on the atom in that molecule. So let's start by looking at this nitrogen atom here. Now let's check in our periodic table. Nitrogen is here. That means nitrogen is in group 15, which means it has five valence electrons on a free atom according to our shortcut. So we have five valence electrons on a free atom. We need to subtract the number of non-bonding electrons on the atom in this molecule. We've got one, two non-bonding electrons. Then we're gonna subtract the number of bonds. We've got one, two, three bonds. So five minus two minus three, that equals zero. So the formal charge on that first nitrogen atom in that first molecule is zero. Now we're looking at the second nitrogen atom there. The number of valence that it should have in a free atom is five again, since nitrogen is in group 15. The number of non-bonding electrons on the atom in this molecule is zero. There are no non-bonding electrons shown there. And then finally, the number of bonds, we've got one, two, three, four bonds there, so minus four. So five minus zero minus four, that gets us positive one for our formal charge. So we can enter that here. Remember, we don't need a positive, num a positive sign in front of positive numbers in the answer boxes. We only need a negative sign before negative numbers. Lastly, for this oxygen here, let's check in our periodic table. Oxygen is here. Oxygen is in group 16, which means, according to our shortcut, that it has six valence electrons. So we have six valence electrons on a free oxygen atom. In this question, on this molecule, we have one, two, three, four, five, six non-bonding valence electrons, and we have one bond. So we've got six minus six minus one, that gives us minus one or negative one for our formal charge, which we can enter in our answer box here. And I'm just gonna label those formal charges on our diagram to make it a bit easier for us to see what's going on. Okay, I'm now gonna skip through the process of finding the formal charge for all of our other atoms to save a bit of time in this video, but you should be able to do that at this stage if you need more practice on that, check out the previous skill, formal charge. So there I got, went ahead and I calculated the formal charge on each atom in each of these molecules and I've labeled them on the diagram as well as in the table. Okay, so now we're gonna use these formal charges to figure out which of these Lewis structures would be most dominant, which means which of them would be most common in nature. So 
there are two things we can look at. The first one is the values of the formal charge. So ideally, a molecule would have the least formal charge overall possible. So if we look at molecule one, it has a formal charge of plus one on one atom and negative one on another atom. Structure two has a charge of negative two on one atom and plus one on two other atoms. So we can see that overall molecule two has a lot more formal charge than molecule one. So based on that, if we want to minimize the amount of formal charge, molecule two is not looking like a good option. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and cross out molecule two and say that's not our dominant structure. Next, looking at number three, we've got negative one, plus one and zero. So one and three, those two molecules, they have the same overall amount of formal charge. They've got one positive, one negative, and one zero. So those are our two best options in terms of minimizing the formal charge on the atoms. So, so far we've said it's not gonna be number two because it has too big formal charge. Okay, now we've got two to choose from. And our second goal, once we've minimized the formal charge, is that if we have negative formal charge, it should be on the most electronegative element. Because remember, electronegativity means how much it attracts negative things. So the element that's most electronegative, that's the one that should have the formal charge of negative on it. So looking in our periodic table, electronegativity follows a trend of increasing as we go up our periods and increasing as we go across our groups. So based on that, we know that oxygen is more electronegative than nitrogen. So if we had to have a negative formal charge, it would rather be on oxygen because that's the more electronegative element. So based on that, molecule one, which has the negative charge on the oxygen, would be better than molecule three, which has a negative charge on a nitrogen because oxygen's more electronegative. So it almost doesn't mind having that negative charge as much as the nitrogen would. So based on that, we're gonna say that option one is the best option. So which is the dominant structure? We've said it's structure one. And the reason why is that firstly, the formal charges on the atoms are minimized. That's A, because we chose this one over number two, because number two had a larger formal charge of negative two on one atom and plus one on the others, whereas structure one only has a formal charge on two atoms and they're of plus one and minus one. Secondly, we chose this structure over number three because the negative formal charge was assigned to the more electronegative atom. So that's reason B. So our two reasons for choosing that structure are A and B here. The final question asks, if we were to measure the lengths of the bonds in N2O experimentally, what would you expect to observe? So we found here that we only have one dominant structure, two and three, those ones are not dominant for the reasons described here. We only have one dominant structure. So as a result of that, we would find that we have one bond that is a triple bond and one bond that is a single bond. So we have a mixed length of our bonds when we measure them in our molecule because triple bonds are shorter than single bonds. Now, something interesting that you'll find when you try the other questions in this skill is that sometimes we have two structures that are equally good as each other. They both minimize the formal charge and the difference in the electronegativity of the atoms doesn't affect our choice. So in that case, we'd have two possible dominant Lewis structures. And when that happens, instead of observing mixed length bonds, we actually observe a kind of uh, hybrid of the bonds and they would appear the same length. So for example, if we had a structure that looked like this, that had two possible structures, and these were both 
equally valid according to the formal charge, then we would actually find we get a resonance of multiple structures. And then when we measure the bonds, we'd find these kind of average out, this, these two average out together, and these two average out together to give a bond length somewhere between a single bond and a double bond. 